the world of bass playing, there are two schools of thought here. You have bass players who get bored with just doing something like this. And then there are bass players who want to do... And actually, what we really want to do is to try and go between those two things. So the bass player, I heard somebody say this once, I don't know if it's a famous quote, but actually a bass player is doing their job really well if they're not noticed. So a bass player, the bass player's job is to be one of the rhythm players, like that is with the drummer, backing up the rhythm guitarist, which is then backing up the lead vocal. And uh, so there's no sort of hierarchy there. Every person has to do their job. Every me member of the band has to do their has to do their job properly in order that the whole thing fits together. Now, there are a couple of things that will enable you to just do a bit more than just this. Now, it depends on the tonality of the chord. What I mean by that is whether it's a major chord or whether it's a minor chord. Pretty much those two are the main two things that you will come across in rock and pop music. At the moment, I'm on a C, which is the third fret on the A string. Now, if I'm in C major or somebody is playing the chord of C, you don't hear the word major banded about much. If it's just C, it means C major. It only means, if it's got an M, it means minor, but for the default is a major chord. If we put middle finger on C, that means that you can have two other notes that make up your chord of C major. And you can create a line that's just a little bit more interesting, but it's only a pattern. You don't necessarily need to know the musical theory of this at this point, because if you want C sharp, you just move up a fret, or if you want to go to A, you move up a string. So you don't really need to know that the, the fact that there's a C sharp in A major, for example, it's not the be all and end all at this stage. You learn all that stuff afterwards. Um, and in fact, music theory is best learnt after you've been playing for a while so that it suddenly things just click into place rather than just sat there with a bit of paper or a book, just learning stuff without actually playing anything. So middle finger and then index finger on the next string. So we've got C and then index finger on the next string, which is the D string, which gives you an E. And then last finger, on fifth fret, which gives you a G. Now, at this stage, it's important to have your fingers arranged so that you always have one finger fitting into each fret, like that. Now, of course, it's quite difficult down here because the notes are all sort of spread apart. So you could practice it initially a little bit further up. In fact, the one in C can be played here you get a slightly bassier tone anyway. Perhaps that's a good thing. So that's the major shape. We've got a middle finger and then index finger and then last finger. Now, if you flatten your last finger onto the next string, you get back to the same note that you started with, but an octave higher. So you could have four notes. Sounds familiar, that's Seduce, Stevie Wonder. That's a very good way of dem demoing the major and the minor one, actually. So the major one is that. Now the minor one is a slightly different finger pattern, but there's only one note different. We've got the same note. So this is C minor now. Starting with the index finger this time, and then last finger three frets up, and then annular finger on the next string, and then annular finger to finish. So the only note different was the second, the second note that I played, which is termed the third, because it's all to do with scales. So here, we've got the first, the third, the fifth, and the octave. And here we've got the first, the flattened third, the fifth, and the octave. So the chord is your C minor chord. Now, 
Now, if you listen to lots of reggae players or ska, it's very often these shapes come into play. Or. Or. There's plenty there. There's, you can play rhythms and you can play these different notes in a different order, but having the root note really on beat one. So that most of the time you're spent on that root note rather than the other two notes. So you don't want this. You know, well, might work, but it's, it, you've lost that sort of thread of that root note. So, you know, it's a good reason why it's termed the root. And then all you have to do is know where your notes are on the bass. And that means that you can essentially play with any band. If somebody says, oh, it's D, and you go, oh yeah, D. Okay, D, that means D major. Remember what I was saying about that major, uh, the, 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 the word major isn't used very well, it's hardly ever used, it means. It's the default, basically. So if somebody says, oh, D, E minor, G, A, D minor, Lots of people think that flats and minors are the same, and they're not. B flat is a, a major chord, B flat major, because you can have B flat minor as well. So B flat is sixth fret on the E string, for example. So in a B flat major, you know, groove, I'd be doing this. B flat minor, I'd be doing this. You can also have sharps, F sharp or F sharp minor. Now, because the bass, bass strings are all tuned in equal um, intervals, it means that this pattern will work anywhere. A works there or there or there. So it works, that pattern works wherever you are on the bass. It's different to guitar where two of the strings are slightly closer together on the bass, it's all the same. So once you've done one pattern somewhere, you can just repeat that elsewhere. So be aware though, that you don't wanna make something too complicated. You know, there are bass lines that sound great just doing this. Rhythm wise, you know, it's, it says what it's meant to say without doing too much. You know, that might detract from the lead vocal because we are all playing for the song here. We're not playing for our, necessarily for ourselves. We're playing for that lead line, whether it be a vocal or a solo player or whatever. So we've got to be very careful that we don't sort of, um, you know, upset the apple cart by just playing lots and lots and too much. But it's just a little extra something that enables you to just to get a little bit of, you know, flavor to your tunes perhaps. Now, with the root note, the third and the fifth, actually, if you were to take one of those away, it would be the third, so that you've just got root and fifth. And lots and lots of country music is root and fifth. And if you're a bass player and you play root fifth really well with a country band, they're going to ask you to come back. So it's it's really, you know, the root and fifth is... And it also works because what I said just now, the major and the minor chord are only different in that one note. It means that the root and the fifth are the same regardless of whether it's major or minor. So actually, you've got even more chance of being able to get around the bass successfully, and you don't even have to worry about the tonality of that chord, whether it's a major or minor chord. So 
there we go. There's a little bit of a, an insight in how to make things basic, but you know, really pertaining to the sort of more of a rhythmic aspect and more working with the drummer rather than trying to play lots of scales.